for today's piece, we are going to be working on painting a galaxy with lots of depth and dimension. So I'm going to be showing you how to add lightness to your piece and how to add shadows to take it from look to take it from looking like a flat painting to a beautiful dimensional galaxy. My name is Vanessa Lesniak from the Pigeon Letters Design Team and let's get started. So I'm going to be using a pad of arches paper with rough grain and the rough grain just means it has a little bit more texture than the regular cold press paper. It's uh, it's very grainy and you'll see here in the video that uh, it takes a lot of water to get into all of those uh, little grooves of the paper. So the first thing that you want to do is completely saturate your paper with water. And this is going to be the foundation of the technique that we call wet on wet. And this is how we start with the technique. We're gonna be using wet paint on wet paper. When wetting your paper, you wanna make sure that you don't end up with puddles on your paper. You want a nice sheen of color across your paper. So in order to avoid any puddles, if you see any forming, dry your brush on a paper towel and place the brush directly over the puddle to soak up some of that water. Now, the first color that I'm going to be using is Peacock Blue by Magello Mission Gold. You are not obligated to use any of the colors that you see here. Use the colors that you have on hand and uh, yeah, make this piece completely your own. Use the colors that you have. I'm going to be doing two things on this first layer. One, I am going to be going directly from the paint to the paper and after I put a nice little a nice little section of color, I am going to go in with a brush full of water. Um, and as you saw there, what I did was I just dipped my brush in some water. I didn't even really bother cleaning it off too much because I'm using the same color. I dipped my brush in some water and I painted with the water just as I would with paint. So what this is going to do is it's going to pull some of the paint that's already laid down on the paper and it's going to pull it out. So you're gonna lose a little bit of the saturation and you are going to pull a lot of that paint out. Now this is the first step in giving us some lightness in the piece. You wanna make sure that you have lots of areas of light. Because remember, one of the first rules of watercolor is you can't, add the lightness back in unless obviously you know you use a white but we're going to try to avoid using white to add light and we're really going to try to preserve the lightness and the whiteness of the paper so what I'm doing is I'm just pulling some of that color out with plain water and uh, making sure that it stays the paper stays very light with just a just a touch of that blue so another thing that you will notice is that I like to work um, with my galaxy pieces in many wet layers. Now, this is going to help the color blend, the colors blend together, and it's going to help give you a nice airy and um, billowy feel to the sky. The next color that I'm using is Helios Purple by Sennelier. Again, feel free to use the colors that you have on hand. You'll see here that when I start going in with extra layers of color, I usually just plop one color on top of another color. You won't see me mixing any paint on a palette. And the reason for that is I, I prefer to mix my paint on the actual paper. That way you'll see a lot more depth in the piece. Um, instead of going in and laying different mixes of paint side by side, just throw it all in there and let the water that's already on the, on the paper, let it do the mixing for you. As you can see here, I am now using a little bit of Bordeaux by Daniel Smith. And you'll see that I'm putting it on in the edges in between the blue and the Helios purple. And that right there is going to cause both colors to blend seamlessly. So what I'm going to continue to do on this second layer of paint is um, alternate between two to three different colors. I try not to add more than two to three different colors because you don't want the piece to get muddy. 
So try to stick with colors that go really well together, such as blues and purples and pinks. Sometimes even a little green here and there um, looks lovely as well. Um, but try to go with colors that go well together and blend well together so that you don't end up with a muddy piece. I am also adding in a tiny touch of Bright Clear Violet by Magello Mission Gold to kind of merge the pinks and the bright purples together with the blues. So what we're going to continue doing is building up the color on the paper. As watercolor dries, it gets a little bit lighter. So if you see, if you see here, some of my uh, bright purples are beginning to lighten up a little right right here right over the top of the darker purple it's beginning to lighten up so i'm adding in some of that bright purple back in it's sort of helios purple is a sort of like a pinky purple and helios purple and more and bordeaux um have around that kind of that same tonality so i'm adding more of that back in I'm also beginning to add a little bit of color around the lower part of the piece. And if you see here, I am basically following the lines of the blue that's already there. I'm trying to keep as much lightness as possible in the piece while also adding in hints of other colors. So adding in the other colors and adding in darker saturations of those colors will bring a lot of dimension into your piece. However, if you fail to keep some of that lightness in the piece, there is a really easy fix that you can do at this stage while your piece is still wet, while the paper is still thoroughly wet. Wash your brush uh, of any color. So wash all that color off your brush. And with the broad side of your brush, drag it along areas that you want to lighten up. Have a paper towel on hand and after each stroke or after each drag clean off that brush and dry it a little bit more on the paper towel and pull some of that color up off of the paper i like to just go randomly in i like to look at areas that are already a little bit lighter and make them even lighter so as you see all i'm doing here is that i'm i'm pulling some of that color up and because the paper is still wet and my brush is still wet that lightness sort of it, it's it's not like this bold streak of light you see that some of the color begins to seep back into it and that's okay because it gives it a more natural look to it and now that i have added that lightness in it's time to start um, adding depth into your piece so using your darkest color which in my case can be either the blue or the purple or the mix of the two what I am going to do is add spots of really dark saturated color to certain areas. So you'll see that I, I really enjoy adding the majority of it to the corners, to the edges of the piece, and also where some of the colors separate. So if there's a separation between the blue and the purple, I'll add a little plop of really, really dark color right in between there. Um, if there are areas where there is just a whole lot of light, like here on the upper left hand um, corner, I am going to break some of that up by adding in some really highly saturated color. And that's going to give your piece a lot of depth. And it's going to take it from this really flat looking galaxy piece to a really dimensional piece. And you'll see that I I even alternate, right? I don't do all of my pulling of, of color um, at one point. So you'll see that I'll go in and I'm like, oh, you know what? It looks like I could use a little bit more light here. So I will clean my brush off and pull some of that color off. So alternate between the two and do what feels right. You'll see here that um, I have little light areas of purple and to give that area a little bit more dimension, I'm gonna go in with a darker area of purple. I'm gonna go in with a darker area of the, the bright Helios purple. Um, it, it really is just kind of about expressing yourself and not being limited to you know the rules 
in, in quotes, <laughs> not being limited to the rules of what this should look like, but going with your gut on what it should look like, right? Going with that intuition that you have on, on what it should look like and keep playing with it until you are satisfied with it. Keep pulling out color to make it lighter. Keep adding in really dark saturated colors to um, give it more dimension, add a little bit more light colors mix the colors together you know this is where you get to have a lot of fun just make sure that there are areas of darkness that there are areas of lightness and that there are areas where you have a lot of that dimension and a lot of the contrast between the light and the dark Once you are satisfied with the way it looks, um, don't let the paper dry. We're going to continue working this wet on wet. And what we're going to do is take a smaller brush and with just water, we're going to splatter some water on this wet piece. So just dip your brush in water and with a brush loaded full of water, splat, splatter, tap that water into your, onto your paper. And what that's going to do is give little spots of separation. And you'll see sprinkled all over the pa paper are little tiny spots where the water is causing the paint to separate from the puddle of water. You can add bigger puddles, just like I'm doing here, by tapping your brush directly onto it. And if you don't want that bigger uh, uh, splatter, then just keep splattering small ones. Now I'm going to dry my paper a tiny, tiny bit, not too much, but just so that it's not fully, fully saturated with water. So you can let this happen naturally, or you can use a hair dryer or a heating tool to do it. And I'm just going to let it dry just a little bit and repeat that process. So you'll see that some of the splatter is beginning to get covered up because the water seeps back into it. And now that the paper is not as wet, the water is going to stay separated. Let your piece fully dry before moving on to this next step. So now you can leave your piece like this, right? There's nothing wrong with it. Look how cute it looks. I love it. Or you can add a little bit of fun to it. So I'm going to add a cute little blue pa blue planet. Sorry, I, I apparently can't talk. <laughs> but I'm going to add a cute little blue pa planet at in this corner here. So I'm just going to take my circle maker tool. Feel free to use like a cup or a plate or a saucer or freehand that circle. I just don't have the talent to do that. Grab some white. You can either use some white gouache, some, uh, you know, uh, white acrylic, white watercolor, any white you have on hand. I use Copic Opaque White. And for the side that is facing the piece, so the, the left side of it, I am going to add a little bit of white to the edge of that circle. And then I'm going to go back in with a clean brush, just has a little bit of water, and I'm going to pull some of that white out. You can make the white as bright or as light as, as you'd wish. What this is going to do is give this side of our little blue planet a little bit of light and makes make it look as if um, the light from behind, so from the sky, is kind of like reflecting onto this side of the planet. So make it as white as, as you want. You don't have to make it super, super bright. Um, but you want to make sure that you blend those edges into the planet. So again, with just clean water, pull that white out and into the body of the planet and uh, blend those edges out.
once you are satisfied with the way it looks, allow this layer to completely dry before moving on to adding color. Once it has completely dried, go ahead and grab a color. You can grab the any of the colors that you used in your plan. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab the blue color that I was working on, working with. And you'll see that I started adding the color um, not very close to the edge. Uh, and the reason for that is because after I lay my color down, what I went back and did is cleaned my brush off. And all I did was add water to the edge so that the blue could, could the blue could blend into the white. So you still have that really stark edge of white along the left side of the planet. And all we did was blend it in with water. And as we're working our way towards the right of the planet, I'm getting darker and darker with my blue. And I'm just going to continue doing this and in order to achieve a nice seamless blend from the white to the blue, all you want to do is add water to it. You don't want to add any more white. You don't want to add any more blue. The only thing you need to do to blend the two colors together is go in with a brush that is not too saturated with water. So I would suggest that you clean it off um, on a paper towel before you go in. You don't want to add too much water but you want just enough water so that you can blend those edges together. Once you are satisfied with the way your little blue planet or whatever color you chose looks, then allow it to completely dry before moving on to the next step. For this next step, take your smallest brush. In this case, I'm using one of the Pigeon Letters um, liner brushes, which has a really, really, really super thin tip. And I'm using the same white, the Copic Opaque White. And I'm just going to add a little starburst on here. And it's just a cross with a little X in the middle and make the lines really, really thin to sh just kind of show this, you know, cute burst of light coming from the planet. And once you are done with that comes my absolute favorite part, and that is adding the final touch, the white splatters to your piece. So you can feel free to take any size brush. Remember, the larger the brush, the larger the splatter. Dip it into your white and splatter away. Make sure that you're rotating your arm or the paper as you're putting, uh, tapping your brush onto your piece so that all the splatter doesn't fall in the same direction. And once you are satisfied with the amount of splatter, you can either add bigger circles, such as I'm doing now, to just show a little bit of a, a, a contrast between the really fine splatter and bigger stars, or leave it as be. And with that, you are done. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial, um, and I will see you all in the next one. Have a great day.